Okay, I think I've set everything up. Let me explain the setup. First of all, I'm going with six players this time. I played with eight. It was kind of interesting because everybody bought one corporation. Uh, this will give the opportunity for some people perhaps to buy more than one. There was a component I didn't notice. For each number of players in the game, there's one of these little things, which is kind of useful. It gives you the cert limit and the number. Uh, you know, that's information that could be on a card, uh, especially on the back of the long game card. <laughs> it's really not something you need a token for, but I don't know, you know. Uh, the size of the, the number of counters they were producing, whatever. I don't know what else they would have done with that space that would have been useful. Um, this is the draw of corporations that are out. And what I've done here on this map, the ones that are not in play are marked like that. I could have them actually here, which might be useful. It's hard to tell which is uh, more useful. I figure since all the starting corporations are placed over there, I'd rather have it presented that way. We have kind of an interesting set where these three, which were all in my previous game and are in kind of a central area, Ipswich and Colchester, two important end cities worth a lot close to London. That's a very powerful set of corporations that are out of the game. Uh, and then uh, the other one that's out is the W and N, which isn't that big a deal. More interesting, what we have for starting corporations are the ones that are face up here. Now we could look at them here, but it's more interesting to see them here. We've got three right up here that are available, which means uh, possible synergy. You know, somebody might start two of them right off the bat uh, for whatever impact that may have. Um, otherwise, a couple that are near London, another possible synergy here with the SNN, or I'm sorry, the NNS and the WVR. Uh, and then the ones that are over on their home base side, those are ones that are not available right at the beginning of the game, but they'll come in later. And do, 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 what else? <coughs> I've got the initial stocks, um, the entire IPO stacked out there. Uh, to me, it's kind of a pain in the butt to not have it like that, but whatever. And handed out 400 bucks per person. And we're ready to rock with the initial parliament round. Remember, there's two of them. Some people can start two corporations fully, um, fully funded at the beginning of the game if they so desire. To do that, what do you need? I don't know. It might not be possible in six players still. Uh, in which case, maybe I should be at eight. Um, but this will make it a little easier on me, I think. Usually I like to play these games at their maximum number of players. I'm not so sure this one, uh, you know, they've got an optional rule. Apparently some people thought that there was too much of a restriction. So with $400, uh, that means, well, a corporation would have to be able to start with $200. And that is not possible. Uh, 54 times five is 250, unless you got somebody else to help you pay for it. So, whatever, uh, more room for investment or a second corporation that comes out a little earlier, it'll make for a slower game at the start. Certainly if you're playing with less than six players, if you're playing with five players, uh, let's see what the money rank is there. 480. 480 means it would be 240 per corporation. 240 divided, because I'm assuming nobody's going to help you, is 48. So you would be able to start two corporations in five players. So I probably chose a weird number at six, but you know, um, whatever. <laughs> I mean, Hey, I, I, I gotta tell you, these two trains were out real quick. This is a game with a fast train rush um, for various reasons. One of which is that no, that limited liability, you know? Um, yeah, let's make some money, you know? I can always figure out a way to get more money back into my corporations. So I think, so I think, it's usually the case, uh, one way or another.
mergers, something else. You throw some of your own cash in by diluting the stock value, essentially. All right. Uh, so, I should start. Well, what looks good to me? Well, first of all, it's important to look at what they're carrying in terms of what type of uh, permit they're going to have. Uh, so, certain corporations look more appealing to me. For example, the N&E down here near London. Wow, that could be really cool. That's an express train. An express train is able to run from here to other cities, ignoring the doinkers or whatever, and make the big money. London is the biggest money on the game all game long. Uh, so that's that's a pretty good corporation. How much is it worth? Well, this is the thing. As the guy with the priority, I don't have to set anything with a chartered corporation. I could just pass across the board to begin with. But then someone else is going to say, well, he'll just take the N&E. So I will put my bid on it as to, as to what it is. And the question then becomes, what is a reasonable bid? When I played the last time, Almost every corporation, until we got to the kind of dregs of the eight corporations, but remember, there's eight players, eight slots, uh, less options. Almost every corporation went uh, for a bid that put it, forced it into the $54 range, um, just to ensure that you didn't get something worse. You know, So the first one that went for maximum value bid was kind of like, eh, okay, well, it's the corporation people thought were first. But as the list started paring down and you start realizing, wow, I'm going to get a shitty corporation in eight players, it definitely did um, cause the prices to be depressed in terms of the share value. So that's something we're going to see, I think, here a little differently. Let's look at, some of the, let's look at the other corporations that are out there. ENR has a freight train. I love freight trains. Why do I love freight trains? Um, well because I was cheating. <laughs> because the initial freight train is only a one, which means it can only go one hex. Uh, I had it, it could skip a hex, which meant um, which meant you get three spaces, you get money from the two endpoints and the intervening space. That's not the case. You just get money from the two endpoints. But all the same, they do have, um, if you can get one near a port, you can get some pretty good money, or if it's near London or the West. If it's out in the middle of the board, it's pretty shitty at this point in the game. So let's see what we've got for freight trains. We've got the ENR, which is right here next to a port. That would be able to make a hundred buck run right away. And, uh, which is pretty good. Um, the N and E, is able to make a 120 run with a two train with a two express. Uh, WNR is also on a port. That's again a hundred run. 80 plus 20. 20 for the basic cities. Uh, let's see what else we got. W and F is running an express. W and F is here. <clears throat> with an Express 2, it has to hit this. This might be the best it can do, which is only a 60 run. On the other hand, an Express train would work really nicely with one of those two freight trains, but it's less valuable than all the other trains that we've looked at so far. Uh, WVR also has an express. WVR is sitting over here, which doesn't look good at all. It could connect these two up, and again, not a very good payoff. Plus, it would have to take time, so I could lay these two tracks, but at some point or another, I'm slowed down by that piece of track. So WVR doesn't look very appealing. FDR is sitting over here with freight. That's nice. This is running at 70, 80, 90. Not as good as those guys are, but with a nice position near Ipswich in London, that's potentially more valuable than it uh, looks just from cash payout. And the E and H 
is out here with a freight train. Now this is not a good location. Um, I can only go one hex. That would basically be the two Ys for 60 with no intervening. Uh, someday it might get better, but again, that doesn't look as appealing as some of the others. So we have, out of the eight companies, <clears throat> let's see, uh, NG&E was nice, ENR was nice, WNR was nice, that's three good ones. This one not so good, I'm going to push it here because that's less appealing. WVR, not good at all. FDR, interesting. E&H, not very interesting. And NNS, we didn't touch the NNS, did we? But that's running a local. Okay. Well, that's our only local train. Does that make it more valuable? Maybe. <laughs> because the local might be able to combine with something like a freight in a very good way. Locals can be very good combination ones. Of course, the freight is the best combination. It's what you want to combine with the others because it generally calculates completely differently. But the local can be very interesting, especially down where there's a lot of dots. There are some dots down here near NNS, so that's appealing. Um, so, for example, I could start by laying this track or this track. Uh, but what I want to do is eventually start building out this way so I get these extra cash. Okay, so what is the W what is the NNS able to do? Well, it's not able to pull off to the port. So it's looking at a 40 run to begin with, but very quickly it could end up with a 20 60 70 80 90 100 run putting 40 bucks in the company treasury every time. That's not bad at all, so I'm putting that in the good good category as well. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Five of the six companies are good. Did I look at the L and D? Oh, I'm sorry. No, the L and N is not in play. So yeah, five of the eight companies, sorry. Right? One, two, three. Yeah, five of the five of the eight initial companies are good. Three of them not so good. Somebody is going to get stuck with something they don't necessarily want. <laughs> Therefore, I do expect the bids to go fairly high. Um, what does fairly high mean? Well, 54 times 5 is 270. Hmm, maybe not that high. So, 270 would be 130 bid to get you down to that level. That's a big bid. That's a lot of your excess money going away. You know, it was one thing in eight players where I believe the uh, total amount of money was 300 bucks per person. Well, 270 says you're making a 30 buck bid and that's your highest bid you can make. So the first person would be putting a 30 buck bid down and everybody's like, okay, well, I can't beat that. And they get one of the good, one of the best companies out there. At this point, sure, you want to put 130 bucks down? Be my guest. You know, I would rather have all my cash in that case and the crappiest of the of the railways, um, because I can invest my extra money. You know, that 130 bucks, that's two plus shares of these companies that are the best companies. Well, yeah, <laughs> two extra shares is pretty damn good. So any bid that loses you a share is kind of iffy, right? So that 130 bucks is kind of saying, well, 54 per, um, that's like 110 bucks uh, uh, to get me to, the, that, that is worth two shares. I'd rather not lose any of that. So that's putting me more to a bit of 20 bucks being kind of an appropriate bid. And that's probably where people want to kick off. Now, the question with the guy with the priority is, does he just want to drop a 20 buck bid down and say, I want the best company or, you know, um, somebody's going to have to give up a share to get that best company from me. And then I can make further decisions in the bidding after that. 
Or do I want to just say, well, I don't want to bid because I can get the best company if nobody does anything. Well, you know people are going to do something. So <laughs> it's probably best to put that bid down right away unless your plan is, huh, I'm willing to give up a share no matter what or something along those lines because you know that 20 buck bid is going to go down, right? All right. The representation is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 100 bucks. I'm assuming that 20 buck bid is good. Uh, is what I want to make and I'm gonna take so whenever I play ones fives 25s hundreds five hundreds and this doesn't look like a big bank I got a whole nother set of these with none taken out um, under there that makes the fifteen thousand dollars so there's my uh, cash you have to bid in realms of five I'm gonna put that 20 buck bid down on now here comes the real question what do I want the entity makes the most money it's 120 right off the bat right uh, it has because of these guys being out of play the ECR until the three train not in play there for the SVR so I've got a route into here it's not a bad company by any means right now I've also got to put a potential route up this way but this is the richer uh, pathway probably in the long run although this one gets me an N right away if I've got like a three train instead of you know uh, whatever um, because I can go boink, boink, boink. On the other hand, if I'm going in both directions, I can go boink, 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 and then I need boink, 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 two threes, so whatever. Anyway, although this is way down in the corner, I think it is the best railway still uh, because of the clearings. If there weren't, if, if things weren't so open in the Colchester Ipswich area, I would be strongly considering is this weaker than it looks? And this is one of the things that is kind of cool about the random setup each game. 21 Moon has the same kind of thing, which is anyway, in a different sort of way, but it has a randomized map, so you don't know which company is going to be good. This one, uh, that game has a randomized how valuable is each um, city, essentially. This one has which companies are available with the same map. So there's, you know, it's kind of interesting because it's like the design philosophy is we're trying to solve the same problems in different ways. Okay, um, I'm going to put the N and E on here. That's the one that's on bid right now. And now the question is, does anybody think that that company is worth a share? He's not making that decision. He can make that later. How do I make that decision? Well, a share is a big expense. And these guys here are going to get pretty good companies, no matter what. So I'm going to say they're only really interested in the little edge that the NNE might prove on uh, a one on the blue die and an odd on the white die. Because this is really a big cost for them. Okay, so they're both passing. Now let's go over here. At this point, we're looking at the number four railway out of the choices. Um, there are still good railways available at number four, right? There's one, two, three, four, five good railways. So I could drop a 20 bit on something, but here's the thing. These guys will be if we just let this go at 20, then there might be more demand for the less valuable railways, right, as we go. And they might go for more money. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So I'm going to drop him down to just a one. Again, I don't think that extra share is really worth doing. But uh, this guy, hmm. He's beginning to feel a little bit more pressure, but we'll go on a one or a three. He does not. And then the final guy is like, I am probably going to get something shitty. Uh, 
So he's thinking a one through four he'll overbid. So he is going to indeed overbid. Now that takes him into the new share price location. The nice thing is, if I give this up to him, I can drop a 20 bid on the next thing. So, how wedded am I to this particular railway? Because I put a 25 bid out. And no, you know, this doesn't have a complicated bidding structure. It's somebody selects something and it is auctioned off immediately, as opposed to the, uh, the 1830 packet that has to, you know, kind of be worked through one private at a time. Um, I am probably not absolutely wedded, but I did put a bid in on it. Uh, I am probably okay. I'm going to go with, I would say, that one odd mixture. I go for it. Interesting. So I've now gone to a 30 bid. <laughs> now two people are involved in the bid. He is and he is. I've already cost him a share. Is it worth trying to make sure I get something better? Well, maybe. I'm gonna still go with odd for this because I was already willing to go with a share. I do not, so I let him buy this for 30 bucks. That money just goes away. Now, notably, priority is not gonna move here. So for the stock round, thing, and for the second parliament round, the same thing happens. But neither of those seems very, the parliament round doesn't seem very important. The stock uh, round might be of some interest. Uh, I doubt it though. So I get to start the NNE. I have 300, and 50, 370 bucks. Well, this is where things get interesting. 370 divided by five is 74. I could just start this at a higher price. And that gives me certain play. I'm giving up some shares, right? I could have started it real low, but this is right on the nose. That's appealing to me. I am going to buy the presidency and I'm allowed to fill out my portfolio. Uh, there's no reason for me not to. I wanna get the things floated. So I am going to spend that 370 bucks straight up and put it into the company treasury buying five shares. I'll be back in a moment. Go into this much detail on everything, but there's the $370 in there. Uh, here are my five shares, three, four, five, I know it's not as wise to do it this way. Doing it the other way actually makes more sense, but yeah, the president's share is not well defined. It doesn't have, you know, like addition. Well, no, it has this. So that's that's appealing. Okay, never mind, because it's three shares, so it's got three circles. All right. Now, I have to buy my tokens, which cost me 180 bucks right off the bat. That gives me 20 more. Make it 25. Out of here. Just counting my change. And, yeah, one problem with this table setup, I didn't want to bring all this upstairs because I had it all set up. One problem with this table setup is I have to walk all the way over there to get to those counters. Uh, my other table setup, I could have those closer or with an easy reach, but um, I didn't want to carry the, everything up. Okay, uh, now I get some markers that I get to put down. First of all, the NNE started, so I'm going to just drop it down there. It doesn't do me any harm. Uh, this goes on the 74, and this actually goes over here. This goes on the par value, and I bought these two in addition to the home with that 180 bucks. Remember, I don't have to pay for them ever again. I'm done, and now we go to him. And I think a little bit. <laughs> the math of that 74 came out really fortuitous. I'm just rolling dice and making decisions based on that. Um, you can usually find something that works a little bit. Uh, and I might be, I should probably be calculating a little better to make sure that I hit 
barriers like that. But it does explain why he went with it and he said no. But he probably should have started with that bed. Although maybe if it was uh, 375 divided by 5, yeah, we're not looking at any better. So, uh, but here's the thing. What's uh, 375 divided by 6? That's 62. So starting it at around 62, I might have had enough money um, to buy an extra share. And I certainly would have enough money to buy an extra share of my own rail. So you can probably find some interesting value no matter what. Uh, what's kind of nice about this is I have some more cash in here and I screwed up. That 370 doesn't go directly in there. <laughs> the other 370 has to go in there as well, doesn't it? Uh, 370 and 370 is 740, yeah. So I'm owed 370 bucks, make it 400 bucks because this is fully capitalized. Got used to partially capitalized ones at the end of the last game. So there's a lot of cash sitting in there, but this is all in the IPO. None of it's in here. That's the cash that I have to play with for the rest of the game. I have an express train, which isn't gonna put money in my pocket. Well, I have an express train right, <laughs> which isn't gonna put money in my pocket, but it is very easy in this game to save your companies by merging them together. <laughs> new, new companies, you don't have to swap trains or anything like that. You can just say, you know what? I see a synergy between this and the E and H, certainly location-wise. It's a freight train, very appealing. Um, probably nobody's going to buy the E and H in this first round. It's not one of the attractive trains because I have the tokens in the middle. Um, so I'll probably have an, at least some opportunity to get it. So what's the next vast line? Yeah, I don't know. Um, these guys run at a hundred. Uh, The FDR was interesting by getting in to London eventually. Uh, in fact, London, everybody's quite far from London. Uh, the FDR's initial run, though, is not that interesting. It's only a 60. What's it running? It's running a freight train. No, it's pretty good, actually. So it's running a 90. FDR is very interesting, and the two other port trains are interesting. Uh, which of the port trains is more interesting? <laughs> well, I think the ENR is more interesting because it has this big opening running down uh, the line all the way maybe down to London. That's very appealing to me. So I'm going to put it between those two, and big money... Early is kind of nice, so I'm going to line at 1 through 4 ENR, 5 or 6 FDR. Okay, we're going to be bidding on the ENR. And yep, this is how I make decisions. Not when I'm playing opposed. I agonize. <laughs> but the funny thing is, it's not like I can tell who's going to be in great shape. I can, I can tell who's kind of hosed, but I can't tell who's going to be in great shape at the beginning of a game of XX. Um, when I do randomize, when I do something else. So maybe all that thinking and calculating I do in an opposed game is not all that valuable. Okay. Uh, again, I like this. I want to drop that bid that makes people... Um, makes people take a second share if they want it. Uh, I'm thinking about going higher. That 74 is awfully attractive. <laughs> what do I need extra money for? I don't know. 
I mean, I really don't. I liked that 62. Uh, let me go double odd. Uh, yeah, he's he's gonna actually overbid. Uh, is he gonna go up to 30? No, he's going to go for a 25 bit because he kind of saw that everyone else was willing to go that high and maybe that's where the limit is. And this is what I mean about expectations. You know, once you see that this thing went for enough to cost a share, well then, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, uh, well, as 400 divided by 54. Wow, that's seven shares. Yeah, so that's two shares of really cheap stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, putting that there, that means, uh, well, he's really iffy about this. So I'm gonna go one and odd on him. Same here. They're just like, you know, I could have lots of shares of something. Uh, over on him, he's starting to get into the zone where I don't really like it. So I'll go to the one and three. He does not. And he's already shown some willingness to bid. But how appealing is the ENR to him? We don't know. I'm going to go with straight odd on him. And he chooses not to, which means that 25 bit on the ENR works. Uh, 25, I believe that got me to a 62 kind of nicely. So we'll see what um, I think he'll be doing that. Things get kind of interesting. He put his 20 bit in on the WNR. He chose to go with that. Uh, this guy goes to 25. This guy's in an interesting position, but if he wins it at 25, it's interesting for him. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. He passes. Okay, why is it interesting that he just won it? Because he gets the next bid. He gets to start the next corporation uh, float. So now this guy has been put in the last position. He didn't realize this was going to happen. Uh, that 25 bid is gone. Since he bought all 50%, oops, <laughs> I didn't put it down yet. He actually floats, which puts him as the second company. There might be a reason you don't want to float right away. Uh, remember though, you have to float by the end of the stock round. But there might be reasons to delay your floating so you don't have to buy an A train or something like that, depending on what you're seeing coming out. With six players, um, we're not going to see nine companies come out. That might be possible in a smaller number of players. It's not going to happen in uh, six through eight, though. That's for sure. So that puts the starting bit over here. I have the feeling that this guy really likes the FDR. Uh, so on anything but a six, he's going to open up a bit on that. And I don't know how high he's going to go on it. Yeah. He's going to open up a bit on the FDR. I've got to swap batteries, so I've got to think a little bit and roll some dice to determine what his starting bit is on it. Uh, does it particularly need money? It's a freight train. It doesn't produce money. The local is the special one that you might be able to get away with less cash on uh, and therefore more shares. Make more money that way. Uh... There's only one local, right? Yeah, the expresses are being ignored. I don't know why. WVR. Yeah, they they're they're shitty. <laughs> they don't they don't produce the money this time. So the express can produce the same money as the freight train can uh, initially, but only if they're next to a uh, a good location. <laughs> and we have that with the N and E, but nothing else. So he opens up with a 20 bit on the FDR. Nobody thought the FDR, except for him, is all that appealing. It's sort of the least of the decent ones in terms of what its initial run is, right? Uh, we had the N and S is no good, but the, um, oh, I've got the N and S up there because it's got an eventual better run. Uh, 
But again, that 20 buck bid allows him to start it at 54, which he does so. He has less money to begin with, only 360 bucks, but that means he can buy two more shares than this guy can, and one more share than these guys can. Uh, that's very appealing, right? Again, this is a game where you can save your companies when they're cash poor and you're not responsible for them at the end. So starting money is less important. So throwing those bids in on your best company, well, it may make a difference if it's able to make a significant amount of extra money. Like this is going to be making 120 right from the beginning. Uh, that's great. <laughs> but <laughs> that that may not be so valuable compared to the worst company uh, having six shares, ha having seven shares of it. So um, those 54s are appealing. Um, that means this guy has the initial bid and he's looking at what's left. There's only one good company left. That's the NBS. And I'm gonna put my 20 bid on that because that still lets me go at 54. That's a local which is very appealing for, uh, oops, to put the FDR down. That's very appealing for the, uh, the 54 bit because it generates money. Uh, the question is, is the other local as appealing? Uh, there isn't one yet. Okay, so yeah. So interesting, interesting calls across the board here. Nice little 20 bid that gets you 54s. Eh. He put that down, but he went to 25, and I'm like, eh, not for the NNS, screw it. <laughs> it's just not worth it. So we got another 62 here. Now, and the 25 buck bid, and enough cash for another share. Now, that puts us to, which may not be his own company. He may look for, you know, hey, maybe I, I don't have enough for an NNE, unfortunately. Uh, but maybe I have enough for one of these other corporations that uh, are more pleasing to me. Now, that puts, there's only one person left who can do one of these. He can release one at zero and start it as a chartered company, or he can hold off for a non-chartered company. Non-chartered companies are kind of neat. He's going to have the company that makes the least money, <laughs> whichever one it is, because it's the one that's no good right now. And he's going to have uh, so nobody's going to want to buy his shares and he's going to have 50% of the company presumably sitting in his corporate treasury. Uh, he can start at 54, start with a little extra cash or start at something a little higher and uh, start with a couple extra shares or start with something a little higher and have more money available in the long run. Uh, no matter what, the initial trains are pretty cheap as is usual in an 18XX, 100 than 200, a little higher than some, but, um, so I think he's going to hold off and do a non-chartered company. He doesn't see a reason that he needs to put all the cash in the corporation at once. He can always buy it in later when the stock value is higher. Uh, no reason not to. So, <laughs> which one? Yeah, well, that's not his decision right now. Priority stays exactly where it is. We go to another one of these. Nobody's got a second company they want to get. He made his decision. He doesn't want to do this. So now we go to the stock round and the player with priority has no money. So he's not buying anything. This guy has 50, 65 bucks for an ENR. Uh, ENR is as good as anything. Does he want to put some cash into the WNR, eh, why? You know, buy your own shit. A little bit of a different procedure for the non-chartered. First of all, he's floating at 58. The reason is he can buy five shares at 58 and still have room for two FDRs at 54. <laughs> why not? And that gives him a little bit of a extra uh, capital in the company. Uh, I'm getting the seven shares either way. Uh, I bought the e &H. I'm leaving the token here. I haven't floated yet, so I don't have a company charter. I'm not on the board. All kind of stuff hasn't happened. I'm not compelled to do this. It's a non-chartered company. I could choose not to float. Probably a bad move, but I could. Um, and uh, 
I could be, have the charter out there and be putting the cash in it, but I like to wait until the corporation floats and then just throw the money in. The reason um, the decisions on tokens and stuff like that don't have to happen until I make the float decision, uh, until I actually float. This is going to be a freight train, but it is going to have shares in the corporate charter, so that is kind of interesting. I will be getting income, uh, which means, even though it's a freight train, which means I may want to buy more tokens, and my tokens are also cheaper. Uh, these guys are 60 bucks each for the E and H. They're only 40 bucks each, but I could also choose to only buy two. So well, I'll take a little look and figure out what can go. But by making non-chartered companies, you can actually build something that maybe doesn't need to merge. Something wrong with the FDR owner. He has too much cash on his hand. Um, I don't remember what he bid. I think he bid a 20 buck bid. I bought, let's see what I got here. I bought five shares at 54. I knew something was coming out wrong. It comes to 270. I have an extra 160 on hand, which puts me to 430. That's clearly wrong. So let's get rid of that 30. <laughs> yeah, if I'm going to make calculation errors like this, this is going to be a problem. Uh, now I'm at 400. I think I bid 20. I don't know what happened. Uh, with my money there. So I think, and I think this is right, 110 sounds right. So I have enough money to buy two shares of FDR only, right? I can't buy an FDR and an ENH. Not that I think I want to. The ENH is particularly shitty. <laughs> so yeah, that would be over my money. So I will start buying some FDRs. Uh. <laughs> Well, so the ENH finally floated. Not a lot of money on it. I got a hundred bucks for a train. That's all I really need right now. I bought one extra token. I think I'm gonna buy it yet another extra token. I may regret this, but with five shares in there, I should be making some good money and uh, I'm allowed to go to seven tokens, including this one. There's an optional rule that allows you to have an eighth token in the game. Uh, I don't really do that. And then there's an extra token. So you've got a token for here, a token from here, and then eight more tokens. So there's enough pieces that you can track everything where you want. I am going to do one thing that's different, though. So these are marked home base. I'm going to replace them with these. The reason is, when I flip these over, they clearly are expended <laughs> instead of uh, otherwise. Uh, there's no reason that this will ever flip over. So honestly, I wish these said stock value on them. There's absolutely no reason that any of these are double printed as far as I can tell, uh, you know, except GMT likes to double print things and they had nothing better to put on the other side. But the one place where I definitely want a differentiation is on the stock market. Not here, not over here. It's useful. Um, as I've shown, I've got the home bases marked, uh, you know, for the companies that are not active. But yeah, er everything else, the one place I really want it is right here. <laughs> Finish up the stock round, I buy my two shares of FDR, pushing this here. That's how I had my price set up. I couldn't buy seven shares of ENH. I don't want to, I want five shares in there. So since FDRs are 54, uh, the price has worked out well. Being the last person gave me that advantage. Uh, you'll notice, hey, there's none of these left. That's because they're in here. There's only one FDR left. It doesn't matter if something sells out. Well, it sort of does. Here's the thing. There's an arbitrage capability on uh, the corporations that are in the I, I, IPO, which is to say at the end of, you know, a number of operating rounds, the FDR might be worth a hundred bucks and I can make a lot of money by just buying a share of it. I can't immediately sell it, but I've just, you know, gotten more money than most of the runs are likely to make you know, early in the game. 
So we got the priority over here and everything's set. And we're ready to go into the first operating round. There's only one because we're in phase A right now. And these don't move. There's no selling out, nothing, you know, you're sold out. It doesn't make an effect on your price. So we're going to see kind of standard 18xx style play. I'm allowed to have two trains, but I'm not allowed to run two trains. So there ain't no reason. Uh, you can see no reason because there ain't no reason. What reason do you need to die? Uh, yeah. Um, so the question is, what do I want to do with an express train? I could shoot this off real quick. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily do me any good because I only have a two train probably two train express which will be running from here to here very shortly um, so what I'm gonna do doesn't really matter which direction I go I am going to looky 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 I got fookies in my nookie I'm gonna lay a track here Mm. SVR is not in play. ECR is in play. I probably don't want to hook the ECR up then. But let's do it anyway just because. So I'll lay this track. Remember I'm allowed to lay two tracks on my first uh, 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 as long as they're not ends. And I need to buy a train. And so I'll spend a hundred bucks I'm going to put this over here to remind me what phase I'm in and I will buy an express train because I can use that. <laughs> Can't use anything else. I of course go back in stock value. You go back and forward on the row you're on. Selling is worth half as much as payout deals. And you know we're going to be following this for the rest of the companies. Uh, I will come back after I'm done with all the, the uh, train, unless something really exciting happens. But if you're used to 18xx, you'll see this. If you're not used to 18xx, well, you know, while this one may be almost as accessible to a non-xx player as to an xx player because of the big differences in the way the trains run and everything, it's a fairly complicated xx to be looking at. It, it is still a fairly heavy one compared to 1830, for example. Push into the next petition phase. You can't sell shares during one of those. You have to make sure your share limit is respected. And of course, the cash you have available if you are going to bid on and start a new corporation. Nobody's got the cash to do anything, so we'll push immediately to a stock round um, where he could play around and do stuff. But you probably don't want to because you just lost money on all your companies, same as in an 1830 game. Puts us to an interesting position, I guess. Uh, the one thing, the one person who has kind of an intriguing possibility is there's only one more two train left, uh, one more A train left. So. I could conceivably have spent 300 more bucks if I had it on hand to buy myself up to a better train and then make lots of money with my seven shares. That wouldn't necessarily be terrible, although it would hurt a lot. There was another decision that I held off on. Well, a couple of them actually. So, like the FDR only got to lay one piece of track, but I want to go from here and I want to build into here. I don't want to be curving around and doing all kind of gunk like that with a freight train. <laughs> if I had a local, maybe. <laughs> uh, of course, I probably wouldn't be starting the FDR with a local. And the other uh, option that I had, SN had this option as well, was uh, I could have dotted here. The E and H especially has lots of dots. For people who are starting here, you bought one extra beyond what the other people had. And this is a potentially very valuable dot. It's my way into the Ipswich Colchester area. I probably do want that dot, but I'm not positive yet. It may be Sudbury's more important. 
or new mark. It's hard for me to tell, or maybe I want this one. I can't be sure. And do I think the N and E, who's going to have to put a dot in London, is going to waste their only dot up here? I think that's highly unlikely. Uh, likewise, the S and N dot, man, nobody wants to go up there right now. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about E and H or FDR cutting in there. Up here we can see, so again, you run into an N and you can't build it right away, but it's what you want to build. Screw it. Just take one track lay. But over here, he's, you know, taking most of them are taking their two track lays. Uh, so I don't think anything's happening in the stock round. We're still in the yellow round. So we go to another uh, operating round. And I think we should get a little bit more on this video, at least, you know, at least uh, get some runs in. <laughs> And then I'll load this up. Notice everybody's got a warranty on their train. Those are going to go away on the first run. They're really kind of useless unless somebody was going to buy the B train at this point. Uh, yeah. Now the operating round is a real one. <laughs> N and E goes first. Let's see if I can avoid screwing up because I did screw up the freight trains all game uh, last time. Uh, first things first. I've got a warranty. I don't need it all. Just catch it. It goes at the... There, I actually don't... I, I think it goes as soon as the train actually runs. But it's not really an issue here. I've got an express train, so I need, as my track lay for the turn, to make this work, to place a token in London. That is my track lay. Which means my express train can now run for 120. 12 a share. I find an N and E token and I mark this. This is something I love uh, games that can afford the space uh, to keep track of the, the run totals. I used to track them on paper. Um, that ends up, you know with the what i found when you track too much on paper people start doing calculations in a different sort of way and i actually found that handing out the money worked faster than just spreadsheeting the game the whole way through or even when it starts getting complicated until the very end of the game when it kind of becomes necessary but uh by tracking it here, it gives you a, huh, how much did you make last time? You know, not every every round, not a complete analysis that you can zone out on and try to figure out what's going on particularly. Just a quick look over, how much is that making? So you don't have to calculate out all the runs <coughs> uh, during play. I think this is the best uh, sample of what you can do. Um, so anyway, it's early in the game. I want to pay out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get double because I started out at too high a rating, right? I'd be chunking my stock prices up, but here's the thing. Not really. Uh, my stock prices don't really matter that much because this is not a... Uh, um, this is a full capitalization company, which means I got all my money up front on it. That whole 740 bucks. So I'm going to pay out, it was, what did I say, 12 a share. Uh, only one person has it, he has 50%. He gets his 60 bucks. <laughs> and this worked just like a two train would have in most 18xx games. Uh, the only difference with this is it's an express. It does not count any of these doinkers. It runs by them and ignores them. Okay. Uh... I don't have room for another train. I don't want to spend all my money to press the trains out. I'm not trying to rush things, particularly with this company. So we go on to the next one, the ENR, which people have shares of. Uh, and what does he have? Well, he has a warranty I can get rid of. <sighs> they don't mean anything uh, in this game. The one on this one may, though. Okay. And the ENR <coughs> is over here, and I want to start building my N. Now, this is kind of, 
what I would have done was, I, I was counting this as intervening, it's not. So I can run from here to there and that's it. Uh, which makes the freight trains less valuable in the beginning than how I was playing it last time. Um, so anyway, my run is going to be uh, a big tennis share. Not that impressive. I can't upgrade anything because we're not in the green track. I do have to think about what I want to do with that ENR in terms of direction. I think I want to go this way. Avoid all these dots. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, dots are places that can get me in trouble. It's an N. So that looks good. And that's the same. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> I could have told that. Do I need a dot at an end? Well, ends grow up to big things. I'm not sure that I need one, so we can hold. Um, but I've just made life a little harder on the S and N here, right? He was hoping to go in this way. Well, he kind of wants to go that way, so that's fine. Um, so it actually works out just peachy for him. And I make my run. I am going to pay out, of course which was tennis share again not twice and what do we got not much money uh, 60 bucks for him 10 for him and that's it and i probably should not be videoing quite so much uh nothing in the company treasury this was a freight train it ran from here to here. There are no intervening spaces there, so I don't get the extra 30 per for ports. Uh, don't want to buy a train. Onward. And WNR is going to run kind of similarly. I'll come back when there's something interesting. The WNR, same run, same money, same position, same stock price. It's all... Uh, I built down this way instead of going straight into here because my freight train can't make it here for a while. That's going to take a, a one, two, three, four train to get there. Now, that doesn't happen until way out here. Uh, so, we're not going to be seeing the big money until the big money is really available there. But I do want to continue building in this direction. I have options on dots. I don't want to put in either one. Although there are companies that are going to be available soon, uh, the WSTL and the L and H. Why I don't want to dot there is nobody's got enough money to start a company. Well, so I think. Maybe I do, right? I have 50, 60 bucks and I could sell some of this. Uh, it's not enough. <laughs> If I sell enough of this, someone else can steal my company. That's not something you want happening. Uh, you really don't want that happening, I don't think. And my hope is eventually to get one of these. Uh, let me take a look at what they are. This one's a local, and this one's a local. So either one of those would be kind of pleasing. Probably this one with a local is better. These, neither of these look very good because they're locals, but... Um, and I don't have a lot of dots around me directly, but I got some around here, so maybe. Uh, and that puts me on the s &N, which I think it is running a two-point local. Well, it's interesting time now, right? I could run this, but that doesn't do me any good. But what does is I was set up by my buddy over there for this. Again, do I want this dot? Well, it's an end, it's gonna get bigger. I don't know if that's where I'm gonna go in the long run. I don't know what I'm gonna build. WVR, what's that? That's an express. No. <laughs> I'm just looking at the nearby companies, which are probably the ones I'd be starting in order for mergers to make more sense. Uh, I'm not seeing too much, too much reason to really be panicking to get that dot. And again, this one, I don't think anybody terribly wants. So, unfortunately, I have to uh, do something. But 
I've got a six, okay, so I've got a two local, which is gonna come out to be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks. And I gotta get my token for it. That's the something I had to do. So that is the same tennis share. I still wanna pay that out. I only have 50% of this because I bought somebody else's stock instead, thinking it'll make more money. And it turns out it didn't, but I couldn't be sure that I would be set up for this. And don't want to buy a train. There goes my warranty. WNR's warranty went as well. I didn't take it off. If I don't have the video on, I don't do things. Uh, <coughs> and there is something I want to do though, right? Uh, it's not that I want to do it, it's that I traveled over one, two, three, four hexes with a local train, so I get 40 bucks. Just some mechanical, there's a lot of mechanical action in this game. Um, a lot of different things going on, more than in most of the XX games. I feel like I'm fiddling with a lot more. I don't know how bad that is. Uh, for, you know, for me, it's not that big a deal, but for some people, I think it is kind of disturbing. Okay, the next interesting, the ENH should be kind of neat. So I've got a freight train running here, and technically this token should be down there or something, I don't know. Um, so the freight train can't go very far. I probably want to build that N. Ns only work one way. Well, I could put it this way. Or that way. Um, what do we got? We got the NGC in the game. <clears throat> I think I like this better, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's hard to tell. Okay. And again, I can't skip this, so, and I have to hit my home station. So now I've got a run of a big seven a share, and this is what sucks. And I need to pop a token out for that. Put that at 70. Of course we pay out, because this is garbage. We make seven a share. He's got five sevens is 35 bucks, but the company treasury also gets 35 bucks because the other half of this is in there. And this is why starting it as a partial capitalization is kind of cool, is that I'm putting cash in here, I'm raising the value of it, and I have lots of shares. They're shitty shares, <laughs> every last one of them. I don't know, is the FDR that bad? I haven't run it yet, so we'll see. Okay, the FDR was the cheapest of the rails. And again, I'm not buying trains. Not that I could here. Um, some of the other companies could have. Could have improved their, their situation. And this is the thing. Some people would want to go up to this better trade at the cost of that extra $300. The person who can probably afford it best was the NME. But the ENR could have as well. And NNS could have as well. You can make a little bit more money. Um, I'm not sure how important early money is in this. That feels like a really drastic action to buy three trains to get one that's, you know, able to get 30, 40 bucks more. And that's it. <laughs> you're not getting like, you're not being able to run three or four trains. So you're probably not gonna be able to start another company anytime particularly soon or anything. Uh, to take use of those extra trains, whatever. Okay, the FDR. The FDR got itself stuck. Uh, the FDR actually has a problem. It can only lay the track like this because this is uncrossable. And only allowed to run one. The FDR, this is an important dot. How many people can get in there? One, two, all three of them can get in there. I need this dot. I know I'm gonna need this dot. The only reason I wouldn't need it is if I had the ESR in play uh, and was gonna start it. So I am going to place that dot, period. Uh, 
There's just no option there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and that is running a freight train. So this didn't really help me because, I mean, I can run 60, but I would rather run 90. And again, less money than most of the other companies. Doesn't get the double. We'll pay it out. I hope I've been giving everybody money. Uh, nine a share is 18, make it 25. 9 a share over here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's a lot. What, 63? So, I ended up making a fair amount of cash with a less good company. Maybe more than anyone else, it looks like it. A little bit more than everyone else. Um, of course, I don't have a lot of money on it. <coughs> it's a piss poor company, but that'll do. And that'll put me back down here. Nobody's gonna have the money to organize. Yeah, I, I don't think any dots should be double-sided with the same thing printed on them, <laughs> um, for whatever reason. Uh, these guys, it doesn't matter. These guys, it doesn't matter. The home base one, sure, that's useful in the one place. Uh, so I would like to use it for that, but I absolutely need a differentiation on this token. What are these guys? Are these double printed with white? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know why. Um, all right. Uh, that is probably the end of this video. We've gone a little over an hour. Uh, nobody is going to subscribe to anything. There is enough money, though, for people to buy shares. So... You know, I don't want to go below my 50% because then somebody else maybe can steal my company. I need to be able to buy 50% of a company to be able to, uh, to take somebody, to start a new company. For somebody else to steal my company, they only have to buy 30% or 40% of my company. So, you know, it does put it a little bit more risk. How much? Eh, probably not. I mean unless somebody really wants a company. Uh, but they can sell their entire company and take your company if they want your company. Remember, you bid money on some of these companies. So uh, the FDR was bid for, the NNE was bid for. These guys definitely do not want to take any risk that they'll lose their company to someone who maybe didn't put a bid down <laughs> and got the shittiest company on the board or whatever. Uh, that would be... Uh, who? Definitely, he's not good, but I think the e &H was the, uh, yeah, the e &H is the worst of the companies on the board, but of course, that's kind of an interesting situation. But he has a lot of shares, and you can see, we're back up to our share value without any problem. All right, uh, let's send it up. I know we haven't gotten very far in the game. I've been going into a lot of detail, mainly because everything in this game, you know, so many of the core principles are fairly different. Yeah, <laughs> that I want to kind of demonstrate them more, and I probably will on the next video as well. All right, up it goes.